It has been many years since the Great Flood. Noah's children have repopulated the Earth. Vegetation grows abundantly. Animals of all species thrive. And cities like Ur rise and fall. But Noah's children have forgotten the God of their father and pray to idols carved out of wood and clay. Even the most righteous of men have turned their backs on the Lord. Tara, you're late. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I'm going to have my son Abram mind the stall for a while. Very well. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, uh, do you think I can have an advance? <sighs> of course. Thank you. Father! It's a lot of responsibility to watch the stall, Abram. Are you sure you can handle it? Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I won't be gone long. Are you sure you'll be all right? I'll be fine, Father. <laughs> well, just be careful then, Abram. Which one of you is going to give me trouble? Will it be you, or maybe you? <sighs> one more time. How did this happen? I'm telling you the truth. The big idol hit the smaller idol with the stick. Abram. We both know it's impossible for that to happen. These idols are not alive. Then why do you pray to them? As Abram grew older, Terra relied on his son more and more. How do they look, Abram? I think we can sell the sheep for a good profit, Father. <laughs> Abram began to think of his future. Among the unmarried girls of Terra's tribe was his niece, Sarai. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Our tribe is blessed with such beautiful women. <laughs> Harvest time, Father. Young girls think about young men. And young men think about choosing a wife. Do you think it's time, Father? Past time, I would say. I was waiting for the right woman. It is Sarai who has been waiting for you, Abram. You knew. I'm an old man, but I'm not blind. You have my blessing. Except for the sheep, our businesses are not good this year. I know. Ur cannot support us any longer. It's time to make a decision. What do you mean? <clears throat> Everyone, I have an announcement to make. As you know, business is not good in Ur. And I cannot support my family. So, I've decided that we're moving to Canaan. Canaan, father? Don't worry, Lot. When your father died, I promised him I'd take care of you. You'll come with us. Isn't Canaan far, father? Yes, but I've heard wondrous tales of the land. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And you believe these tales? If half the stories are true, it'll be better than remaining in Ur. <laughs> Sarah is dreaming again. She's always dreaming of Abram. They're in love. will be married in the spring, before we leave for Canaan. Canaan? Why? There's nothing left for us here in Ur. What's the matter? Are you afraid to take the journey? <sighs> Not if I go as your wife. So Terra, Abram, Sarai, and Lot left Ur and headed north. But the road to Canaan was long and hard. <coughs> so, Terra decided to stop at the thriving city of Haron. Haron is a wealthy and prosperous city. We can buy what we need to continue our journey. Terra never did leave Haran. He stayed and prospered. But Abram was not content. Interfering, son of Terra. I'm curious, Captain. What has this man done? I refuse to worship their goddess. Shouldn't a man be free to choose his own gods? Who are you that we should listen to you? Just a man, Captain. But a man with no stomach for such injustice. Send these people home. Now. Kind. Why don't you bow down before their goddess? Because she is not real. How do you know she's not real? The face of God cannot be sculpted in clay. Then how do you speak to your god if he has no face? He speaks to you, Abram. He speaks to your heart. One night, the Lord came to Abram. Listen to your heart, son of Terra. Haran is no place for you. Who are you? Who speaks to me? I am the father of all creation. I am the Lord God. What do you want with me, Lord? I have great and important work for you, Abram. Why me, Lord? Because you are a righteous man, a man who seeks the truth. Abram, I want to bless you and make your name great. But... I will make your descendants into a great nation and all the people of Earth will be blessed through you. Then I will serve you, Lord, with all my strength. Go then to the land I will show you.
husband, what has happened to you? Who has done this to you? The Lord God. Which God, Abram? The God of our fathers, I think. You think? How can I be sure? If he is the God of our fathers, why did he come to you? He wants me to go to Canaan. You? What will you do? We have to go, Sarai. What if he is the true and living God? I must seek out the truth. You've always been one to do so. So, you will come with me? Where you lead, I will follow. Father, I have to finish the journey to Canaan. Why? Haran has been good to us. I know, but I'm certain this is my calling. Your calling? Yes. I've heard the voice of God. You've always been searching for the God, Abram. Are you sure you have to make this journey? Father, I know in my heart what I have to do. I want you to come with us. <sighs> no, Abram. I'm too old, too tired to make the rest of the journey. You are the leader of our people. Not any longer, Abram. I see something wonderful in your face. I don't know how or who has put it there, but I know that my time is over. Take your nephew, Lot, Sarai, your wife, and the members of your household, and go to Canaan. Find that for which you are looking. Abraham, you knew from a very young age, God speaks to your heart, not to your face. Now he tells you, lead your people to a special place, cause you're the chosen one. Abraham, Abraham, what you gonna do? God's chosen light is all over you. It's on your face, it's on your brow, it's in your heart, and God knows how. So what, oh, what, oh, what are you gonna do now? What's a guy to do when you're chosen by God? You can't run away, gotta give him the nod. You do the thing he wants, that's the way that it is. Trust that he's always right. So Abram led his people south towards a land that was said to flow with milk and honey. The trip to Canaan took many months. When they arrived, they stopped in Shechem by the great tree of Morah in the land west of the Jordan River. Abram prayed for guidance. I promise this land to you and your offspring. Here you will live and honor the name of the Lord. So Abram built an altar to the Lord at Shechem. And then Abram and his people journeyed on to the hills east of Bethel, where he built another altar. But famine came to the land of Canaan. So Abram took his people to Egypt where they were made welcome by the Pharaoh. But Sarai drew the attention of the Pharaoh, who took her and placed her in his own house. <laughs> the Lord saw the plight of his servant Abram and afflicted upon Pharaoh all manner of plagues. What have you done to me? Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? You would have killed me if I had told you. Take your wife and leave my land, or I will kill you. Take everything that I have given you, but leave at once. <coughs> so Abram took Sarai and his newly acquired wealth back to the hills near Bethel. Bethel, we'll stop here again. Then what? We live in peace, Lot. The Canaanites aren't going to hand their land over to us. The Lord has promised us this land, Lot. We will get it however we have to.
we offer this innocent lamb to God, the creator of heaven and earth, the highest judge of all who dwell in every land. you're doing a sheep now not stop this in the name of the Lord it was planned you know what the fight Hot's men did it on purpose. You're imagining things. Am I? I come to apologize. It was my herdsman who started the fight. All is forgiven. You are family lot. We do have a problem, though. I know. The land cannot support both our tribes. What shall we do? I think the time has come for us to go our separate ways. Choose, nephew. Whichever direction you take, I will go the other way. Are you sure there is no other way? I'm afraid not. Go ahead, choose. Very well. I will go east towards the Jordan. You mean towards Sodom? I know what people say, that Sodom is a wicked place, but the land along the Jordan is fertile. My herds will do well there. May God be with you, Lot. So Lot and his people left for Sodom. Lot has his own destiny, Abram. You mustn't worry. All I ask is that you protect him as you would protect me. What do I do next? Look around you, Abram, in all directions. I'm giving all this to you and your descendants, as I promised. Go. Take your people and walk your land. took his people west, away from the Jordan and into the heat of the Negev. And out of the desert they came to the valley of Mamre at Hebron, where the water was sweet and the land flourished. Elamites, with his allies, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elasser, and Tidal, king of Goyim, defeated the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and their allies, the king of Zeboyim, the king of Bela, and the king of Adma in the valley of Siddim. Then they stormed Sodom and took Lot. Enough strength to come and get you. Rest, my friend. Rest. 
What will you do? I must rescue Lot. So Abram took 318 of his young men and pursued the retreating Elamites north to the Well of Hoba. the Elamites head on. There are too many of them, but I have a plan. of Sodom. How can I ever repay you? Feeding my army will be more than enough. Nonsense! I want you to keep all the riches you recovered. The Lord God commanded me not to take even a thread from you. That way you will never be able to say you made me rich. Abram returned to his family in Hebron, but Lot went back to Sodom to rebuild his home. Is everyone all right? Where's Lot? Lot is okay, but he chose to remain in Sodom with his wife and children. May God protect him. Abram, I am here, Lord. Fear not, for I am your protector. As I was in your victory over the Alamites, so shall I be with you always. You have done well, Abram, and your reward shall be great. How can that be, Lord? My wife Sarah is barren, and a slave will be my heir. Abram, look to the heavens and count the stars if you can, for that is how many descendants I shall give to you. Lord, you are righteous and honorable, but how do I know this is true? Can you give me a sign? Make a sacrifice to me, and I will give you a sign. So Abram made a sacrifice to his God, and the Lord promised Abram that he would have many heirs, and that the land of Canaan would be theirs. Sarai did not conceive, and Abram was without an heir. But Sarai had an Egyptian servant girl, Hagar. And she gave Hagar to Abram, saying, You must have an heir, Abram, and I can't give you one. So make my maid your wife, and you will have a son. Hagar, please help us. Hagar grew proud, and when Sarai called her, Hagar looked on Sarai with contempt. <laughs> I need your help with the firewood. But I'm pregnant. I can't work now. You can still work for months. Now come. Do you want to risk losing the only child Abram may ever have? There's something I must tell you. It, it could be a long time before we see rain. Abram? I want Hagar out now. You love her more than me. Now you know that's not true, Sarai. This was your plan. Well, now she's smug and disobedient. 
I'm busy, Sarai. You control your maid. Do as you please with her. So Sarai dealt harshly with Hagar, who then fled. But the Lord sent an angel to find her. Where are you going, Hagar? I'm running away from my abusive mistress, Sarai. Well, you must return and serve her. You are carrying Abram's child. Uh, I can raise the child on my own. You are carrying a special child, a son whom you will call Ishmael, because the Lord has seen your misery. The Lord will give him many descendants, too numerous to count. You really were sent by the Lord. I will certainly do as you say. So Hagar obeyed the Lord, and in time she gave birth to a young son. <laughs> Abram dwelt many years in Hebron, and when he was 99 years old, the Lord visited him once again. I am God the Almighty. I rejoice in you, Abram. Come before me and be blameless, because today I will confirm my covenant with you for all time. No longer will you be Abram. From now on, you are to be called Abraham, because I am making you the father of many nations. I promise you and your descendants the land of Canaan, and to be your God forever. Your wife will no longer be called Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I shall bless her and give her a son, and she shall be the mother of nations. But Lord, what will become of Ishmael? Ishmael will also be blessed. He will be the father of 12 rulers, and from those rulers will come great nations. But I will establish my covenant with Sarah's son. How can a 100-year-old man father a child? How can Sarah, who is 90, bear a child? I am God the Almighty. There is nothing beyond my power. Then the Lord and two angels appeared in the guise of ordinary men. My Lord, if you look kindly upon me, do not pass by my tent. Stop here and rest. Have something to eat. Allow me to wash your feet. You may do as you've said. Quickly, bake some bread. We have company. I will prepare a calf. Where is your wife, Sarah? In my tent, Lord. Tell her I will return in the spring when she will give birth to a son. <laughs> I'm certainly much too old for this pleasure. <laughs> Why does Sarah laugh? Does she think that there's anything beyond the Lord's power? Uh, I didn't laugh. Yes, you did. Come with us, Abraham. Show my two friends the road to Sodom. Abraham, you are my chosen one, and if I expect you to trust me, I can't hide anything from you. There is a great outcry against the wickedness in Sodom. I am going to destroy it. A whole city? What gives you the right to destroy the innocent with the wicked? Do you question my actions, Abraham? I trust you, Lord, but... The people of Sodom have greatly sinned, and they must suffer. Sodom has grown rich on the fruits of the land, but it uses its wealth in ways that all decent men despise. <laughs> the ways of Sodom are evil. The people live only to indulge their vices.
Sodom must be destroyed. Surely there are righteous men in Sodom. Will they be slain too? I must know. Will the Lord spare Sodom if there are 50 honorable men? Yes, Abraham, I will spare Sodom for 50 men. But why do you speak for the men of Sodom? I am nothing, Lord, just dust and ashes before you. But I will be so bold and ask again, what if there are 45 good men? If I can find 45 good men, I will not destroy Sodom. But, but even 40 good men are worth sparing, or 30? Yes, even for 30. Don't be angry, but for the sake of 20, what about 10 good men? Because I love you, Abraham, I will spare Sodom. But only if I can find 10 good men in that city. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Return here in the morning to witness Sodom's fate. Wait, wait, Lord! Please, take care of Lot. Welcome to Sodom, my lords. Thank you. We are very tired from our trip. Can you show us to the center of town? Oh, please. You must spend the evening at my house. Really? It's no trouble for us to sleep in the square. Oh, I insist. I won't be able to sleep knowing you're in the street. Uh, Sodom's not safe at night. Come. That night, the Lord saw that the entire city of Sodom was wicked. He told the angels to rescue Lot. Lot, you have to leave Sodom now. What? What are you talking about? You know of the wickedness in Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord is going to destroy these towns. You must leave now. But, but my wife and my daughters! We will get them. There is no time to waste. Please, let us go to Zor. I'll never survive in the mountains. All right. The Lord will spare Zor. Go quickly. But whatever you do, do not look back at Sodom. Says God, Sodom and Gomorrah are full of men. Everyone's a sinner, so I'm getting rid of them. But some of them are good, says Abraham. Please hear me out if I'm the chosen one. There must be 50, 40, 30, maybe 10 men like my nephew Lot. They aren't all bad, so don't kill them. Your grace is all we've got. destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels warned Lot and his family not to look back at Sodom. But Lot's wife, who was born in Sodom, looked back at her home with regret. And when she looked back, the Lord turned her into a pillar of salt. Oh, oh, oh. 
as the Lord said, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth the following spring to a son. <sighs> a son, just as the Lord promised. We will gladly name him Isaac as he commanded. Oh, look at him. Strong boy. Beautiful boy. Although it was against his will, Abraham sent Hagar away because Ishmael was a bad influence on Isaac. And as the years passed, Abraham took great pride in his son Isaac, and he taught him about God's promise. <laughs> Abraham, are you there? I am here, Lord. Abraham, I am the Lord God. I have made a covenant with you and your descendants. I brought you to Canaan, saved your nephew Lot, and gave you a son. I am devoted to you, my Lord. I must know if you love me, Abraham, if I am first in your heart. What can I do to prove it to you? Take your only son Isaac, whom you love, to the land of Moriah, and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the summit of the mountain. I've heard you, Lord. I shall obey. And on the next day, Abraham and Isaac set out for Moriah with two servants and a donkey loaded with cut wood. Come along, Isaac. It's getting late. You want a child, God gives you a son. Isaac is his name, you love him like no one. You think by now your life's work is done, then God says, well, you're the chosen one. Take your son to Mount Moriah. An altar and lay him there start a fire underneath him and offer him to me in prayer Abraham Abraham what you gonna do God's chosen light is all over you it's on your face it's on your brow it's in your heart and God knows how so what oh what oh what are you gonna do now what's it gotta do when you're chosen by God Run away, you gotta give him the nod. You do the thing he wants, that's the way that it is. Trust that he's always right. When they reached Moriah, Abraham and Isaac went up to the summit alone. Come along, Isaac. Yes, Father, I'm coming. Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? The Lord will provide us with the lamb, my son. waited in silence, Abraham built the altar upon which he would sacrifice his son.
You must lie here, my son, and you must not move. All right, father. I, I do this as the absolute proof of my loyalty to you, Lord. Abraham, Abraham! I am here. Stop. Do not lay your hand upon your son. The Lord now knows that you love him above all and would have sacrificed your only son to prove your faith. Look. <laughs> because you withheld nothing, not even your only son from the Lord, he has blessed you and he shall bless all of your descendants for all time. Thank you, Lord. I will call this place. The Lord will provide because of what happened here today. <laughs> Abraham and his family lived in the promised land for all their days. And the Lord blessed them above all men. Abraham's the leader of many generations. They call him the father of many nations. Because he knelt to God in veneration, he's the chosen one.